Hey guys, it is Tyler here back once again with another Assassin's Creed video. This one is a follow-up of sorts to my previous video talking about some of the backlash, I guess you could say, to the announcement of the Ezio Collection. Now in that video I talked about why people are angry and expectations being too high, things like that. Now, I stand by everything I said in that video. I'm excited for the Ezio Collection. It's three of my favorite games of all time coming to the current generation of consoles with all the DLC, all the extra stuff in it, with some modifications to graphics, especially Assassin's Creed 2, which has quite a graphics upgrade. Now, I understand people being upset about it, and I talked about, you know, the fact that knowing this game was coming and it being leaked, you know, two months out from its release, you know, it being September now, it coming out in November, I knew going into this announcement, I wasn't going to expect much. Because, you know, two months prior, sure they've been working on it for some time, but if you're not willing to show a game off only a few months before, in my opinion, I don't expect much from that. Clearly it's not something they're going to be bragging about, especially someone like Ubisoft. Maybe if Ubisoft hated money, then that would make sense. But they don't, and most smart business people don't think that way. You know, they want to market something that's a good product, and coming in two months isn't saying it's a bad product, but they're saying that it's not something brand new and huge that they're expecting people to buy. It's something like, oh, cool, I have sold my 360 or PS3, let's buy it, or I've never played this, but I've played the newer games on this generation of console, never got to play the Ezio Trilogy, what's everyone banging on about with this? Now they get to try it out. So things like that. I stand by all of that. Now, I wanted to talk about... What if they didn't release it this year? What if none of this last month happened and they released it in a couple years time? I always wanted and I always expected them to release some sort of collection or some sort of remaster for the Assassin's Creed games, particularly the Ezio ones, in a couple of years time. I'm surprised it's this year, but again, like I said in the last video, I don't expect anything huge from this one that we're getting, that's this year, in two months time, this is all I expected to get. However, before any of this leak came out, before anything was said about this and it was all just speculation, I was hoping for something bigger. I'm with you guys, I was hoping for something bigger, but that was, you know, long before this leak. As soon as the leak was out, my expectations went Pachoo! But I was hoping that we could have a huge graphics improvement, all that sort of jazz, and I wanted to talk about the things that could have happened if Ubisoft had waited, taken this whole year off. You've got the movie this year, you have Empire next year, and maybe perhaps, in my view, 2018 was the year to release it. You take another gap between your brand new games and you release a collection then, but you've been working on it now, keep working on it. You've got two more years, make it something really special and spectacular. And I want to talk about what features could be added, all that sort of stuff. So, the main one, obviously, would be graphics. You know, I, I thought you wait from now and keep going two more years, 2018, you could hugely improve the graphics, not just in Assassin's Creed 2 and improve that even more than it already has been, but also in Brotherhood and Revelations. Make it more than just a port. You know, you've got 60 frames a second, put it on PC, it gives you the time for that. Add a whole lot of graphics upgrades. I'm not a big fan of changing parkour. Like people talk about, you know, a remaster being gameplay like parkour shit. I don't want any of that. That's you're changing the games. That's not a remaster. That's a remake. I'm talking remaster like you know the Halo Master Chief Collection with Halo One and Two Anniversary. I'm talking Fable Anniversary. I'm talking Uncharted Drake's Collection. All that sort of stuff. The back Batman Return to Arkham stuff. You know, you change the graphics, you improve the look of the game and the way it runs on an engine. You don't need to touch the gameplay, you're changing the game that way. You're remaking the game. If people want that, I get it, that's fine. But that's not a remaster, that's not what you want. You're asking for a remake of the game. I don't want gameplay to be touched, I don't think it's necessary. The gameplay's not bad. You are playing old games, you should feel like you're playing an old game, but look at it and be like, wow, this looks incredible, it's a bit of a different vibe, a bit of a different experience. You can remix some of the music, add some new soundtrack elements to it, maybe. But really improved visual, visuals would be the major point of having a game like this. And having something that looks so different, it gives you a chance to then also redo things like cutscenes. You can totally mocap them this time, as they didn't do that in Assassin's Creed 2 Brother and Revelations. They did some facial captures in Revelations, but it just gives a whole lot more improvements to those cutscenes. It's a lot of work, yeah, but when you've got a huge change like that, that's going to sell a lot of copies of your game. It just would. 
And it was an investment they could have definitely done and would have been really spectacular to see it, though Roger Craig Smith, who voices Ezio, doesn't have the physique and build of him. So that would be difficult to do. They'd obviously have to have another actor play Ezio and then just have Roger Craig Smith dub his voice over again. Which, you know, it still would work, but it would just be a bit more challenging than what they do nowadays where they hire actors to play their characters from scratch who does the voice and does all the acting parts of it in the cutscenes and things like that. So it's a bit more challenging, but with time, it's worth doing as an investment, in my opinion. Now, another major factor, and it's probably the biggest one in terms of waiting two more years, is my theory that I've talked to James about a million times on Kill Connor Club. We've had discussions about it and theorized about it, and it's to actually have a new modern day as a part of that collection. So... What reason would you have? Well, let's just say, again, hypothetically, Desmond's son's the main character of Empire. They start a new modern-day arc. Perhaps he's an Abstergo being trained by Abstergo, or similar to Desmond, I don't know. But he has access to the Animus. We've been introduced to this new modern-day character. We've been introduced to this new protagonist he's been playing as in Empire. However, he's related to Desmond, right? So he has Ezio's memories and genes inside him. So he could then access the Animus in his own free time. It's just a small teaser, modern day, but you cut out all Desmond's bits and you just have this guy have the ability, this young man, go in the Animus and relive the memories of Ezio like his father did. And it gives you a chance and a story reason to revisit the Ezio games and Ezio story because this young man has never experienced that, those memories and things like that. But also, when you're talking about graphics improvements and things like that, you can use the fact that this is an improved animus, so it portrays the, the memories even better than previous ones. So there's even a story reason to have improved graphics, let alone be back visiting the Ezio games. It's not just, here's the Ezio games ported over for you, it's, this is a reason right now in the landscape of the Assassin's Creed universe to revisit the Ezio games. It's important because we've got a new guy that is also related to Ezio because it's Desmond's son. That's why he has a reason to go back and revisit it. He can perhaps see, I don't know, glyphs instead this time of his dad instead of glyphs of 16 or both or I don't know. But there's a lot you could throw in there just for some extra teaser, some more setup. And he can kind of see what his father did, perhaps, in terms of, in Ezio's story, Desmond is a part of that when it comes to the first civilization aspects and all that sort of stuff. So there's a lot of awesome things you could do. We're just adding a little bit of this actually is kind of a sequel, but also a remaster because you're sequeling Empire with this modern day, but revisiting an improved old game that is beloved by so many Assassin's Creed fans. Now those are the major points. I mean, you've got you would have such improved graphics. I don't personally believe you need to touch gameplay, combat, any sort of stuff like that. But improve the graphics. You get all three games, other than just in this one, where Shaw Brotherhood and Revelations have slight alterations, but they're more or less the same. This would give a chance for all three games in this collection to look absolutely incredible graphics wise and give a real reason for a lot of people to get behind it. it gives you time to develop it on pc to redo some cutscenes, to add a new modern day entirely and gives you a reason as i said in the landscape of assassin's creed to revisit Ezio's story again and it not just be us going like oh throwback thursday let's play the old games no it's it's a reason right now in terms of the way the new games are going like empire and empire's follow-up we need to go back and visit Ezio because that's what this kid's doing you know, I, I think that would be really special. And that's what I originally always wanted from the Ezio collection or something like that. That's what I always thought would be the best option marketing-wise, selling copies, but also keeping the story moving forward and giving you a bit of a, a, a... Keeping us fed as fans in between, again, keeping a year gap between all major title releases because I think they could, should continue to do that and that would give that opportunity while... Like I said, since they've been developing it now, you've got two more years added onto that. Imagine what they could do. Look, at the end of the day, I agree with a lot of people. That's what I wanted. That's what they should have done. But I'm still excited for the Ezio collection because as soon as the leak was out, you know, you've got to give up on those sort of sorts of expectations. You've got to be rational about it. You've got to look at it of what's actually going on here. What's Ubisoft's plan? They're really just trying to port over the game's and do a bit of a remaster because of the current generation of consoles 
and give new fans a chance to revisit it, or to not revisit, but visit Ezio for the first time. Give us a chance, who have sold our consoles, I personally haven't, I've still got them as I've said, right behind me, to play as Ezio again and revisit that, but at the end of the day, it's all a bit of fun. And sure, it's not exactly what I wanted, totally, it's not what a lot of fans wanted, but as soon as the leak happened, that was my expectations, I'm happy with what we've got, and you know, in my own fantasy dream world, that's what I would have liked to see. So I thought I could at least address that for people that are a bit upset and a bit confused of why I'm so, not so excited, I'm not like a million times, oh my god, I'm so hyped for this, but, you know, it's going to be a fun time, I'm excited, I'm going to play the shit out of the Ezio collection. So, anyway guys, those are my thoughts on what they could have done with the Ezio collection with having more time, but it's coming out in 2016 in November. This is what we're getting. We shouldn't really expect any more, unfortunately. If you don't like it, you know, don't buy it. You probably have all the old copies. If you want to play Ezio again, you want to experience this Assassin's Creed 2 remaster, and you want to have them on your current generation of consoles to have security that you're going to be able to replay these games for years to come, get it 100%. It's all up to you. At the end of the day, this isn't the thing we're super pumped about and looking forward to. We should be waiting for the next game, the future. This is just a bit of a thank you, here you go, with the year off. Hopefully that keeps you going until Empire comes out. So guys, that's all I have to say in this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. If you don't like it, I don't care, dislike it, whatever. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I will see you guys later.